Hello everyone, it's Davide here and welcome back to Learning Finance. In today's video guys, I want to talk to you about Palantir. So Palantir stock, uh, ticker symbol PLTR, which is a stock that I own, is a stock that I have been buying in the recent drops, I told you in the channel, but it is a company that is not easy to understand, right? Honestly, at first, I didn't understand it either. Obviously, uh, when I look at it, I said, well, software company, company very interesting uh, it works on contracts however when i looked the long term orientation that they gave a revenue of 4 billion or more in 2025 you look at the valuation today and you ask yourself uh, why is that i mean does that makes any sense a 10x on price to sales ratio of 2025 today and then i saw also Cathie wood buying a lot okay of palantir at that particular price so i asked myself maybe is there something here that i don't get because if that is the real guidance i mean why the hell should you buy palantir today and then i started to read and read and read because palantir is absolutely nothing easy to get it okay the industry whatever is going on it's sometimes even dark so after like 20 days of trying to read about these things i came out with basically what in my opinion can be the bull case for palantir stock okay and why i think that Cathy wood is so bullish on palantir and other investors are despite uh, the valuation today okay so so in this video i want to share with you um, basically what i think is the bull case for palantir and in order to understand that we have to understand the environment that palantir is in the only thing i ask you is please leave me an only like it's very important and i thank you for it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new updates let's begin so first of all guys, after I read a lot of different articles and different stuff, uh, a friend of mine just sent me this article from Seeking Alpha and it is amazing, okay? It is just amazing. Honestly, it's a half an hour read, so it takes you some time actually to go through it. But I think that perfectly summarizes everything that I read before uh, to actually read these articles in different parts, okay, of the internet. So I have no clue who this guy is, I have no relationship with Seeking Alpha, but I leave you the link down in the description because if you want, I think that this is a very great article that makes you understand the situation, the environment, which is the key to actually uh, try to estimate the bull case for Palantir stock. I'll try to do it briefly as possible, okay? Now, first of all, to understand the environment, nowadays, what is the best asset that this world, 2021, can have, okay? When we look at big tech, what are they looking for? Are they looking to get gold, platinum, diamonds, all this kind of stuff? No, okay? They really don't care about those things. What is probably the most valuable asset in the world? Data, huge amount of data. It's all they care. They give you free services in order to get data from you. That's what they need. Facebook, Google, all this kind of stuff. Now, in this environment, in the big tech environment, we find different business ideas, okay? We have stuff like Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, who are basically offering the customers, which are people, a service or actually an hardware, for example, an iPhone, MacBook, or whatever you want, you pay for it and that's it. Then they get data, yes, but it's, let's say, their main business is where customers are the people. While companies like Facebook and Google, if you think about that, is completely different. The product are the customers, okay? All they care is give you something free in order to get back information, whatever it is. Now, what is this plan to get all that information? If you take a look at what Google said openly to the world, that the main plan for Google, the main goal is to invent AI and quant computing. Okay, that's it, that's their plan. It's like they have passed basically the last 
20 years trying to build AI, trying to get as much data as possible. Most of the times in the history, they have been actually sued because of these things, okay? Getting data without even sometimes asking for a permission, okay? It was everything about getting as much data as possible. And what is the goal of that? To create AI, artificial intelligence and quantum computing. Now, in this race, to artificial intelligence and quantum computing, we can define two different factions, okay? On one side, you have the centralized one. In that part, you find Facebook, but most of all, you find, as I just told you, Google. Its objective is to actually have all that information for Google itself, and then to have the artificial intelligence and quantum computing for Google itself, in order to then sell the product to basically everyone else. Now, by doing that, the idea of Google, I know it sounds strange, but it can literally take over the world even more than what he has done until today. If you don't believe that, just take a look at what Elon Musk said about Google. Google, that, by the way, is not as much talked about, for example, compared with Amazon, Apple, all these companies, they are always like in the mouth of people, while Google kind of like remains aside, right? Like no one cares about it. But according to Elon Musk, Google is the only company who is really afraid of Okay, so that's probably should tell you something. This is a piece from the article, actually. The stakes are very high. To create the AI and ML tools of tomorrow, a powerful platform for data is needed. For as long as Google manages the world's information, it will have the upper end in developing AI. The current CEO of Google, Sundar Pichai, has said that the impact of AI will be more profound than man's discovery of fire. Then even more, this is going to be the decade in which quantum really comes of age. An IBM executive recently told the Wall Street Journal, quantum computing is to AI what nuclear weapons are to bombs. This quantum race is the context to the current debate about privacy. So this is huge, okay? This is huge and this is what is going on. We kind of know it's coming, but we don't understand how powerful and actually life-changing can be in a bad or good way. Now, who is on the other faction of this thing, okay? So on one side, you have the centralized part. On the other side, you have, guess who? Palantir, okay? Palantir in a kind of a team with IBM, we have just seen basically the last partnership with them, which is not just about salesmen, okay? It's not about that. I think that the main bomb in this case is this. IBM promises 1,000 qubit quantum computer a milestone by 2023, okay? So that could really push through the partnership with Palantir because Palantir provides the software, a software that no one has, okay? They have worked 20 years on building that and absolutely no one is even near to have this kind of stuff. Together with IBM, power of cloud, and most of all quantum computer, they are the only one that they can actually face for real, the Google centralized AI project. Now, together with IBM and Palantir, it looks like that also Microsoft wants to join the team. So it's kind of like a, a sort of a war between tech powers. And what is their idea, mainly Palantir's idea? is not a centralized AI, but it is a decentralized AI, okay? So to give this huge power, not just to one company, but to actually divide that between a lot of organizations, different companies in different sectors, okay? So that everyone can have their way to actually manage the data and not that one company has everything. And in that, there are included governments. 
the United States governments, but also in Europe. Palantir is working a lot with European governments. This is obviously also to remain competitive with China, because China is working a lot through the AI system. Actually, China, in terms of technology, they are way ahead of time, better than what we think. And the thing is that a lot of people that are working in this AI system, they are saying that AI is so powerful, together with quantum computing, that actually who has it first has a lot of power over the world. Okay, so it's like a sort of a new technology war, technology basically race to who is the most powerful in terms of tech. And Palantir on that side is helping, obviously, uh, the government itself of the United States, but also a lot of different industries, okay? Trying to not put all of that power in the hands of one single company, which on the other side is the Google master plan. Now that's fair enough. So now that we know that, uh, what is the bull case for Palantir? Because that's the main question as an investor. So in order to understand that, we have to think about that kind of a fight between the two factions. So centralized Google, decentralized Palantir together with IBM and Microsoft. The bull case obviously says that the side of Palantir will win. Now, what that means is that obviously, imagine all the businesses out there, the big companies, from now to 10, 15 years in the future. The idea is that AI, and all these kind of technologies that actually can understand data and become better and better and better and kind of write algorithms by themselves. All this kind of stuff, which is obviously is very dark to understand, as sometimes it looks like we are watching a science movie. So imagine that that takes over for real. Okay, and you have the first companies who joins actually Palantir together with the partnership of IBM, quantum computing, all this kind of stuff. And they realize that as, uh, for example, Rio Tinto has already realized that way of doing business, creating a sort of a digital clone of your business and trying to run scenarios in order to understand the problems first. Kind of something that they were doing with Palantir uh, in Iraq or Afghanistan, where basically they were trying uh, different scenarios of war scenarios, trying to understand uh, how those scenarios will play out before even they happened. Okay, so that's the idea. Take that and push it through a normal business. So a business plan, a new idea, a new project, how it will go, where are the problems, where are the weaknesses, strengths, all this kind of stuff. Palantir can make it possible even more powerful with the IBM partnership. So let's imagine that that takes over and all the businesses realize that and more and more businesses, they want that technology because it's the way to move forward, okay? Because if you don't have that, you are not competitive anymore. So let's take a look at some numbers here, trying to understand uh, if Palantir can actually do a 5x, 10x in the bull case scenario. Now, 2020, Palantir total adjustable market. They have estimated that is around 119 billion. Now, to understand the total adjustable market concept, we have to understand that the TAM is an annual number, okay? It changes over time. Annual contract value times the number of possible accounts, okay? contracts, customers, whatever you want. The important stuff here is that it is annual, okay? It's not a fixed number, but it actually changes over time and it grows. So what I have done, I have taken the estimated 10 for 2020 and then I grew it by a 6%, okay? Until 2030. Now, 6% in my opinion is fairly conservative, okay? It's nothing crazy. Actually, I think that if this AI technology will really take over, we can see, especially going on by 2025, a higher rate than that, okay? It can go probably exponentially, but in order to actually do this valuation, I've taken it fixed to 6%. Now, the time of Palantir in 2020 will be 213 
billion, right? And everyone is saying that no one is even near、uh, to have a similar technology to what Palantir has in terms of software. They spent the last twenty years building that. And they are ahead of times. Now, the percentage of the market. How much will be the percentage of this market for Palantir in 2030? I took 20%. But once again, people are saying that no one is even near to Palantir technology. So 20% is probably low. Anyway, let's keep it simple over there and conservative, just to have an idea. That means that the possible revenue of Palantir will be 42.6 billion by 2030. A simple price-to-sales ratio of eight, which is basically the average of what the software business is trading to today, we should have a market cap for Palantir of 340.9 billion dollars. Today the market cap is 44, and that simple stuff will mean that Palantir today has the potential to almost 8x in market cap over the next 10 years.、Uh, the thing is that, in my opinion, if That AI quantum stuff is as big as they are saying. They said that it will be bigger than basically the man's discovery of fire. Now, if that is true, if the future is all about AI, quantum technology, and all this kind of software that can basically write themselves, and this decentralized way wins, so. Palantir, a lot of companies they will want to do contracts with it and have that technology by themselves. What do you think that this time will be? Okay, just two hundred thirteen billion. That's not much, guys. That's absolutely not much because if we just go on and see the fact, this is just from twenty nineteen. We realize that Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. They had in 2019 almost 700 billion in revenue. Okay, without considering Microsoft. If you include Microsoft in that and you forward this by one year, you realize that together they have done more than one trillion dollars in revenue. Now, considering that this AI stuff, a lot of people are saying that it will probably the biggest. Thing that we have ever seen, I can presume that at least the total adjustable market will be around one trillion. Okay, similar to what the Fang, together with Microsoft, are doing today. Okay, so nothing too much crazy, just something that is already happening in this world. Now let's say that the percentage of the market Palantir would take less of it. Okay, just. Fifteen percent, and the revenue will be one hundred fifty billion. You put a normal price to sales ratio of eight, which is nothing crazy for a software business, and you would have a market cap of one point two trillion dollars for Palantir. That means a twenty seven x return on the market cap. Okay, so. I think that if you want to think about a bull case for Palantir, that's the answer. AI will take over, and the decentralized fraction of that kind of war with Google will win. So, not a centralized power, but a decentralized power in different actually institutions and businesses and sectors. So that's the Palantir's bull case, and that's why I think that Cathy Wood is so bullish about this company. Now, obviously, there are endless risks, there are endless question marks that we have to find out. But in terms of a bull case, I think that that's what actually it can happen. Okay, is it likely? Well, I don't know, but honestly, more than I read about Palantir, and more than I like the company, and more than I wish I could buy, especially if the price gets cheaper, okay, in the short term. So that's just my opinion, guys. And I hope you find the video interesting. Leave me down a comment with your opinion. I love to read those comments. Leave me a like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.